Hi, in this video of ASP.NET, we will start working with the global.asx file. So far, when we were defining any session or application variable in ASP.NET, we were using an ASPX page, that is, we were defining on a particular page. So, whenever we were defining the variable on a page and assigning a value, we were dependent on the user that if a user will go on that particular page only then those variables will be in action. But if I want that from the very first request those session or application variables should be in action then we can go for this global.asx file which will give you some server side events. So basically this global.asx file is a known, also known as the application file and it is optional. As so far we have already worked with ASP.NET without creating any global.asx file. So if we want to create, we will only create it when we want to handle some server side events. So it resides in the root directory. It means it will be there in the root directory. You can't place it inside any sub directory. And whenever you want to create a global.asx file, there should be only one global.asx file in your web application. Now, whenever you will execute your web application, this global.asx file will be parsed and compiled dynamically as a .NET Framework class. Means whatever the functionality it will be providing, it will be providing as a class that is derived from HTTP application. So here, we'll start working with the global.asx file and we'll see how can we start defining the variables inside these server side events or whatever we want to perform how we should start using the different events provided by this global.asx so let's start the implementation now so let's come to solution explorer to add the global.asx file in the web application for that i'll come to add new item and from this I will add the global application class. As soon as I will add this, you will see that here there is an application directive in which the language is specified and after that the methods, those are the handlers for the server side events are defined. So as you can see there are the events like application start, application end application error session start session end if you want there are a few more methods available which you can add in this application file now as here you can see there is an application start method which actually executes whenever you start your server or application or if you made any change in this method so what I'll do here I'll define the application variable out here with the name count and here I'll initialize it with zero now since we can store object type value so here it's a number now any time when a user will come and will make a request I will just make an increment so in the session start event which will execute whenever a new session will be started I am just making the increment in the count variable so here I'll do count is equal to I'll have to type cast that first and then I'll make an increment similarly if there is a common point where you want to define the session variable for your web application you can define that here also so what I'm doing here is I'll define a variable called session data called session name is equal to guest so by default when a user will make a request it will be a guest guest request unless he logs in as soon as he'll do the login I can just change the name here with the ID or the name of that particular user so now let's come to the web pages again and right here on the click event what I'll do is I'll not change the application data here rather I'll change the session name is equal to text box value and when I'll click here I'll go to default.aspx so let's come to default.aspx on the page load event of this particular method what I'll do I'll print the name of the session variable the value name alright and then I'll also print the counter 
so count and now it will be concatenated with application count dot to string all right so let's put a line break also all right so let's execute it now I'll write any value we'll click on submit here you can see count is one similarly I'll come to another browser now here I directly made a request for this default.aspx so you can see the default value which came here is guest and count is two if I'll come here and refresh you can see the count for both the pages are same since it is the application data and for the session both pages has the specific on both sessions are having the specific value for this session similarly in global.asx file if you want you can also go for the other events like application end if you want what you want to do when your application will be ended so what you can do you can simply write the counter on a particular file so that when your application will be restarted you can just provide any different value from a file rather than zero so that you will not lose the value similarly whenever any unhandled exception will come to your application at that particular time this application error method will be in action and similarly when someone is logging out or timeout is there means anyhow if the session is getting terminated then at that particular time this session end event will be raised and this session end will be raised only in the in proc mode of session state not in the state server or SQL server so this is how you can start working with this global.asx file for performing the logical operations on the server side events